hang on guys, this is our first, we've done Zoom many times, but this is the first time we've converted to actual webinar Zoom and it's a little different. So, where do I see attendees? I just, Participants, I, I, I see I, on, oh, I see, okay, okay. Yay, I see I you just, guys. I, I just said welcome to all panelists. I know some of you out there, hi. Hi. Oh, wow. That's so fun. So we're going to kind of let everybody funnel in for a few minutes, okay? How are y'all doing? Everybody good? It's say fun to hi. see some say hi in the chat familiar box. names out there. Yeah, here we go. Hi, Taylor. Taylor's one of our guests. Florida. Hi. Hello, Florida. Now, how do you know they're from Florida? Oh, right down there. Oh, my cool. Dad's, my, my, yeah. dad, my dad's in Pompano. Oh, I've seen all this. Pompano. Yeah, hi, everybody. Canada. Wow, Fort Worth. Mexico, Taos? Fort Worth. I love Virginia, Taos. Virginia, Rhode Eastern Island. Canada. Yeah, all right. Eastern, Eastern Canada. Texas. I'm in I, Eastern Canada. Got some people in Cali. I Saudi Arabia. Cali. All right. I recognize Ontario. a lot of the names. Ontario. Ontario. Yeah, Ontario. That's so fun. <laughs> so cool. Hi, you guys and gals. <laughs> Let's just wait a few more minutes. Is that okay? Oh yeah, we're gonna keep it open for five minutes. Hey, yeah, okay. five five minutes or so. So we'll, we'll we'll chat amongst ourselves. So how are you guys doing? You ready for this? Oh yeah, I'm excited. Me too. We've been we've been working on this. I have not been painting that much. I can't wait to paint again someday. But we've been working on tidying up fine art tips and adding this whole 2020 club, which we'll reveal later, and really working hard on bringing you wonderful tips to oh, help yeah. us through this strange 2020, thus the 2020 club. So we feel really confident. Taylor, this cute little face sitting here, she's actually my daughter-in-law, but she's a YouTube <laughs> phenom, and she's going to share some of her YouTube tips here shortly. Hi, everybody rolling in. Yeah, we got San Diego, Phoenix. I, I, I know. Washington. Washington, Arizona. Buffalo. I know Lisa Buffalo. just said hi. and. Oh, wow. So fun. Lots of names out there I recognize. I wish I was hoping we could see their little faces, but I guess not. So I'm sitting at my, so I have two workstations. I have an easel, obviously, where I paint. And in future webinars and other videos that we'll be doing, I will sit at my easel at times too. But for today, I'm in my office studio because I have the better computer here. And of course, both my computers are on the fritz, <laughs> but I, I think I'm covered. I think we're going to be okay. So, and, and I'll be man the chat. So it's like, if I yes. look a little distracted, yes. I no, actually am distracted. So say, say hello to Picard. Hi. <laughs> I like your background. Hi, Picard. Picard. Hi, Picard. I'm not Picard. Oregon. And it's me. good to see everyone here. <laughs> yes. That's funny. Angus. Angus. He's our buddy. That's so the fun. Man. You're the man, right? All our buddies. Hi, Picard. <laughs> I'm really honored to have you here. <laughs> yeah, good to see you there, Angus. So uh, we still need one of our panelists to join us, though. Are we seeing any sign of him? This could be an issue, but we have to carry on. I might. Yeah, yeah we do. I, I think to, we're... Should I call him? I don't know. Maybe I should call. Or text him real quick. Um, reminder. See. Sorry, you guys. Give me just two more minutes and then we'll get going. Sure. Get your notebooks out, everybody. <laughs> um. Oh, there he is. Steven. Right. Yay. Oh, my goodness. Right, Steven. Steven. I was out of the shadows. Finding, Where were you? I was having trouble finding the link. <laughs> or the light. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hold on. Let me fix that. I had it set up on my, on my easel before, so I had to... Uh, we fix this. Here we are. So, hi, Deborah. So, we have, we're, we've graduated from just regular Zoom to webinar Zoom so we can have more than four on at a time. But we, I guess we can't have all of you on at the same time, but you're there. All your little chats are there. So, we'll keep track of all that. Yes, get your notebooks. I had problems sitting in. It would not recognize my email address. Linda, oh. um, do you see that? I Where's my tech guy? Tech guy, where are you? Somebody found the hey, I, I, I'm here right here. But yeah, I'm not sure why I didn't uh, recognize the email address. 
Uh, okay, but she's in now, right, Linda? You're good. Yeah. You can it. Hi. She's one of my artists from Dana Gallery that we show together. Missoula, Montana. Notebook yeah, cool. and pen, ready to go. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. So, are we ready to go? Yeah. No. No. no the, the, the one thing. Uh, the, Go ahead and get your questions and start questions. We're going to be doing a Q&A later. Okay. And so you'll be upvoting questions in the little Q&A area. So start, you know, uh, with uh, some of the queries that you might have once we get going. Okay. Greetings, everybody. So we'll keep um, this open so people can jump in. They're still rolling in. So we're going to close it, close the door, what, a little bit? So We don't have to. You know? you know, okay, we just were yeah. concerned about Zoom bombers, but okay, let's keep it open. Hopefully, people can keep rolling in. But anyway, hi, everybody, welcome, welcome um, to the 2020 Club and, and Fine Art Tips. And I'm Lori McNee. Let's all introduce ourselves. And, and we have Reg, he's going to be yeah, he's my seven. social media guru, and he's managing Zoom here. And Stuart is the master wizard of all the, the webinar, the wow. everything, the blogs, thank you. And everything that I'm, you're such a big help to me. And Taylor is our YouTube phenom. She's gonna be sharing YouTube tips um, shortly. And Steven Yaversky is a fabulous artist, a fellow Royal Talons ambassador. And he uses Twitch and Patreon, and he's going to share a couple other things with us a little bit later about that and how he monetizes things. So right. are we ready to go? So we'll just jump in. So what a crazy time. And I hope uh, you all leave this meal, uh, meeting with fresh ideas and a lot of new inspiration. So I just want to thank you all for being here. And I have started the 2020 Club because, well, Stuart has been helping me with my blog, Fine Art Tips, for quite a few years, and he's wanted to do this as well. And we want to help people. I feel very compelled to help people, and that's why I started Fine Art Tips back in 2009. And my own right now, um, through this hard time that we're all going through, the whole world, I mean, this is unprecedented. You know, everything has changed so much. But we're here to help you guys weather this strange time and to actually go higher, right? We're going to go higher and we're going to grow from this together. Oh, yeah. Uh, my own events um, have been canceled and workshops and, and I've been Lori in lockdown just like you guys. And so, <laughs> so everything has felt out of control. And, but one thing we can control is we can do our best to take charge of our art careers, our creative entrepreneur careers, and now is the time to invest in ourselves and sharpen your saw. We have a lot of quiet time uh, that we didn't have before. And so now's the time to get even more creative and to really sharpen your skills. So that's, that's what we're going to work on here today and moving forward with the 2020 Club. So I wanted to just tell you just a moment, and, and some of you maybe have heard this. I just was on Andrew Tisler's podcast. And so some of you watched that. Thank you, Andrew, for having me on. And I shared a little bit of my backstory, which I will again right now. So I reinvented myself in the last recession that we had in 2008. It was a pivotal time in my life. I was newly divorced after 23 years of marriage. And it was a really hard time. My kids were getting older and growing up, and I was basically faced with an empty nest at the same time. And then to make matters worse, you know, yes, I had my art, thank goodness, but the art market crashed because the stock market crashed in 2008. So everything tanked. The housing market went down. And when houses aren't selling, art isn't selling. Walls aren't selling. So I was, you know, kind of, I was pretty stressed out back then. But then a friend told me about blogging and I hadn't really known much about what a blog was. And I investigated and I kind of liked the concept of basically sharing your story. And I thought, well, what could I blog about? And, you know, they, they say to share what you know. And one of the things I know best is art. And so I decided to start Fine Art Tips. And I didn't know what I was doing back then at all. So I found a blog that told you how to start a blog. And one of the big tips that is super important and still to this day is to have five pillar pieces of content. And so that makes the blog sticky. 
And what that means is so when people come to your blog, they don't bounce right off. So I wrote five evergreen, that's another kind of con buzzword evergreen piece of content. And, and so now I had these five great posts, but nobody to read my blog. So at the time I had already been a member of Facebook and I always say my kids were mortified because they were <laughs> back then it was mainly just young people all over the internet on Facebook. But then I remember at the time I joined Facebook that when I was surfing the web, I saw a little blue bird go by and I remembered that little blue bird had a tagline. What are you doing right now? Well, that was Twitter. And once I started blogging, I understood what that tagline meant. So I went back to Twitter. I found that and I signed up and I started my name right away, Lori McNee artist. I just put artist on the end because I knew right away I was going to brand myself as an artist. And I just honestly understood Twitter. I just had a natural, like a duck to water. I just understood how to use it. So what am I doing right now meant, I just wrote this great blog post. That's what I'm doing right now. And I put my tweet down and there you have it. And within about a year, year and a half, I ended up, now this is a long time ago, 2009, but I ended up being one of the top 100 women in the world on Twitter. And I held that position on that list for quite a few years until it just got so competitive. And I had to also make a choice. It did change my life. Twitter truly changed my life. And before I knew it, I was interviewed by the Wall Street Journal and the Huffington Post, and I was on the red carpet tweeting. I was a tweeter, com tweeting commentator. Everybody made fun of me back in those days, but I understood the power of social media. And so I was doing, you know, the red carpet events for like the Emmys and the Oscars and, and Golden Globes and lots of fun. And I went on to give keynote speeches to organizations, which I still do, and wrote books and DVDs. And I even now have my own TV show. It's a small little TV show, but all of this because the power of Twitter and social media. But I had to make a choice. Was I going to be a social media personality who painted every now and then? Or was I going to be an artist who also uses social media? As, as a tool to get my message out there. And so, of course, I chose the latter. And although I still, of course, use social media, I consider myself a, a painter first. So I just wanted to tell that backstory because all of this happened during a recession. I was able to reinvent myself and to inspire new things um, and to rise from the ashes, so to speak. And so many big companies um, have done the same thing some brands you'll recognize like Disney, GE, General Motors, FedEx, Apple, MailChimp, even Airbnb. Airbnb, I think, started in 2008, just to name a few. So last night, I was in bed with my iPad and just kind of doing a little bit of research, and I landed upon the Harvard Business Review. And I'm going to share a couple things that they had to say. So I, what, one thing I've always done with building my brand is I've always kind of hitched my wagon to a star, so to speak. And so I would always follow and still do follow brands that are much bigger than my own within my niche and outside of my niche that inspire me and takes uh, big ideas and Im implement them in a smaller way for myself. So maybe Harvard Biz Review has some ideas for us. Now they're talking about big brands here, but they said during a recession, premium market leaders shouldn't move their brands down market. Okay. So that means you don't want to take your brand and lessen, lessen its appeal, but they can introduce a fighter brand and a lower priced version of the premium offering sold under a different name or backed by minimal advertising. So just think of this in terms of what you're doing with your own creative business, whether you're a photographer, an artist, maybe a clothing designer, or some other creative entrepreneur. Maybe you can kind of look at what the big brands are being told to do by their marketing teams, and maybe you can come up with something like that too. So these big brands are offering temporary price promotions or, or list price changes and they're trying to improve their affordability by offering discounts, extending credit to their customers, and layaway plans. So this is something artists and other creatives could consider doing right now. 
it, but and also remember this though if you are represented by galleries you want to make sure that you really respect your relationship with your galleries and they're struggling right now too but one thing that i'm noticing on instagram and some of you out there are probably doing this already have you heard of the hashtag artist support pledge and that was started by a UK artist, Matthew Burroughs Studio, at Matthew Burroughs Studio. And people are, uh, artists are painting small paintings and they're selling them for under $200 or thereabouts. And once you've made $1,000, then you're supposed to go and support another artist and buy a painting of theirs. Now, this is something I would oh, suggest cool. if, you, if you think of jumping in, to that do something that is not competing with your gallery maybe you can come up with a different size that's not available so i'm thinking about doing this and maybe doing something really small that would not conflict with my galleries at all and, and so this is just i just wanted to jump right in and just give you a tip right away so anyway but the point is keep the other thing that harvard biz review said is that the brands that have uh, good customer loyalty and relationships, the trusted brands are going to weather during a recession more than other brands. And now that's where social media and your blogs come in into play, is that's where you have already hopefully built the foundation. And if you haven't, you're gonna start right now to have a, a, a great relationship with your following, your customers, your clients, your friends, and build a wonderful network so that you can build that trust and confidence and survive and get through this dark time. So anyway, that's, that's what we have going on here, hopefully, where we can meet and greet and exchange ideas with each other with the new 2020 club. So get out those notebooks and Reg, explain how the questions and answers work one more time for us because we have new people joining us. Well, um, I, yeah, I just want uh, po uh, people to post their questions into the chat. And we'll, okay. just reach, we'll reach down and we'll pick out some good questions and okay. uh, yeah, just move, move forward with those. Okay. I know I threw a lot at you already and was talking quickly. And uh, oh, thanks to everybody out there saying hi still. It's great to have you here. So we're going to get started. So I'm going to introduce Reg. He's uh, our master of ceremonies hi, behind the scene there. And um, so Reg, um, AKA Zaibatsu. And I first met Reg many years ago, back way back on Twitter when we started. We were Twitter, we are Twitter old school. We love the old way of doing things where it was just 140 characters. It was all text driven, no visual. It was very different, very fast, but it was a special little club and a lot of neat relationships were formed, that, formed then. And yeah. Reg is one of those people that I met. And uh, Reg's own social media journey began ages ago on Dig, uh, a, a social bookmarking site. And he was able to drive millions of viewers daily to his favorite stories there. He went on to co-found one of the first and widely successful tech podcasts, The Drill Down. Some of you maybe have heard that uh, in the past. And today, Reg is still a force on Twitter, and he also manages influential social media accounts across many social channels. And I know some of you see the work he does. Some of our favorite painting social media channels are driven by him. But anyway, Reg has been rewarded for his hard work and he has made the Forbes top 10 influencer in social media. So he's done a lot of good work. He's a real expert. So I'm really honored to have him here working with me on the Thanks, 2020 Lord. Club. Hi, Reg. Hey, Lori. It's talking good to be about, here. I know. I, I won't talk so much soon because here's your first question, Reg. All right. Okay. I feel like, like Reg. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <it's> question <laughs> number one, right? <laughs> question number one. Okay. It's, it's like, it, this, is, this is fun. People are working from home now more than ever. You are, are, you are a work from home expert, as are That's most all I do. artists, by the way and a talented social media consultant, as I just said. Will you please give our audience some fresh ideas about how they can stay relevant, connect with the right people, and even expand their brands during this really tough time? Well, we're gonna talk about the big social net networks out there a little bit later. So we'll dive okay. into Instagram, 
Facebook and a few others on YouTube, which is Taylor's going to cover, and then uh, Twitch with Steven. But I want to take a look at hyper local. I, I think that's the best way that we can focus on expanding our brands, expanding ourselves, and getting that leg up. So the first thing you can look at is joining communities. Uh, now, what type of communities? Well, uh, Instagram doesn't have communities, but Facebook does. So what you want to do is out to communities that are in your niche. Find influencers that are, are similar to you and just go ahead and join a Facebook community, a Facebook group, and reach out to people in that little genre. That's one, one way you can just sort of get yourself going. But you need to figure out how to build relationships with these people. So one of the main things you can do is not only working in the groups to find others to build your brand, but also you can go onto your uh, social media channels like Instagram and Facebook and find people that you look up to, uh, some of your peers. And how do you uh, find them, Reg? What's the best way to find them? Well, I mean, uh, you, we have people that we follow right now. So if you're on Instagram, like, you know, people might be following you or you might be following a few of the larger artists out there. The problem is uh, sometimes they're hard to get a hold of. They have uh, yes. uh, tens, of, tens of thousands of followers, even a million followers. So when you say hi to them, uh, they're not getting back with you. And maybe not because they're ignoring you, just because they don't have time. Uh, maybe it's a brand that's being controlled by like like a, a management company or something. Well, here, here's a secret. If you, uh, instead of uh, trying to knock on the door of that, that artist or that big brand that you really look up to, look at the post that that brand is making or that person is making, and then look at the people that are making comments. And those are the, the people that are driving, the driving force behind that brand or behind that, that group, uh, whatever company it is. So if it's someone you look up to that's posting photos, they have a 200,000 followers, they have a ton of likes, they have a ton of comments, reach down in those commenters and start engaging with them. Uh, talk oh, to those tip. commenters. So you talk to them, follow those people, and those people will follow you back and help build your brand. So if you're a photographer, reach down, say hi to those people. And another tip, you want to have people share your content. Okay, uh, so you were talking about reaching out to the following of the influencers. Right, so you reach down uh, to the people that are not only following them, because it's hard to mine followers or, or dig down into the followers, but the people that make the comments. Right. And I think that that's an important tip, and that's actually how I built originally my following back on Twitter. And it um, works on Twitter. It, yeah. it worked so well on Twitter. So this this strategy actually really does work. I haven't really myself tried it with Instagram. Maybe I should, but it works with quite a few of the other platforms then. It does. I mean, it's not, not universal because some platforms just don't have that sort of commenting and that activity down below, but it works really good on Instagram, works good on Twitter, and it works really well, you know, on, on a variety of social media platforms. Okay, great. And people are hearing you now, it says. So good. Okay, that's good. Okay, yes, that's, that's good great. Well, uh, that, that's a great tip to think about. So again, it does take work, you guys, but any business that you're working on and this, if you can just start to look at social media as part of your business plan, part of your business model, and just block out how much time would you say a day, Reg? for a busy artist? Well, here's the thing. Uh, social media, depending on the platform, uh, it's not costing you money. So it's going to cost you time. So it is the no, amount of time smart. you put into it. Yes. So when, when I first started you know, on social media, uh, this is ages ago, I put a lot of time into it. And I've had a lot of friends who have sort of come up on social media. And it's uh, because they work so hard down in the trenches. So if you want to get people to like your, your, your content, like your brand, uh, like what you're doing, you really have to spend the, the time working. So when I said reach out to commenters, talk to them. You're going to have to talk to a lot of people. So it's as much life time is a as boomerang. you want to it. I always say yeah. life is a boomerang, right? And you get yeah. back what you, what you put out there. So oh, yeah. it's, it's true. So um, great. Is anybody have any in the panel here have any input on that that they'd like to share? No. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Well then thanks so much for that. That was great, Reg. And um, we're going to move on to Stuart. So Stuart, um, AKA Stu to you. He's started this new handle, which is going to be a lot of fun for him. He can explain what he's up to in a moment. 
Finding Stuart was for me another great example of networking. And I actually met Stuart through Reg. And, and I don't even know these guys in real life. I mean, I do, this is real life, of course, but we're such good friends and now we're business partners and we've never met in person. So this is crazy. And someday we will. I know. Isn't that crazy? We'll have to have a 2020 club retreat. That's what we'll do. But anyway, a few years ago, my blog, Fine Art Tips, it, it just turned out to be just this monstrous thing. And it's a fabulous blog, but so much work. And it was getting hacked all the time. And, you know, my hosting companies, and I used the big, we all know the name of them, tried a couple of them, bounced back and forth. And, and they kept saying, your blog is too big for us. I'm like, well, how can I be, what are you talking about? I'm just a little artist. And anyway, she helped me out this one time. I was about ready to give up. And this was just a couple of years ago. And you can kind of tell if you want to know the truth from my blog, because I didn't blog that much for a while because I was so frustrated until I met Stuart. And he came in on his white stallion and saved the day. And within no time, he migrated my blog, which all these other companies said, oh, we can't, we can't migrate your blog anywhere um, unless you pay us a million dollars, you know? And anyway, he moved me over to his hosting company and it has just worked like a charm ever since. And then he's so talented. He has spiffed it all up and helped me with all my categories that were crazy and everything. So it's been fabulous. But anyway, Stuart started his own career, digital career in the eighties, working in the U S Navy as an airborne data analyst where he hunted for submarines in the Pacific and Indian oceans. So he's really good at finding hackers and bad code and stuff on websites, you guys. Anyway, he's the co-founder and CTO of WordsRack Incorporated, web hosting and design agency in Ohio. He earned the designation of certified partner in hosting with Cloudflare Flare Incorporated, where he was a beta tester in 2010. Okay, so now he lives in a UNESCO biosphere on the Canadian Bruce Peninsula where he enjoys kayaking and hiking. Before we get started, you don't live in some bubble though. Like what is this UNESCO biosphere? Just real quickly explain that. I, I didn't know and I'm just throwing in there the three words that are on my bio around social media and here you'll learn is I'm a geek, I'm a carpenter, <laughs> and I'm a, I'm a rock hound. Cool. The, the rock hound part of it relates to the UNESCO biosphere. UNESCO is the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. They worry about the planet, and we are all stewards of our environment. And I live in a place where light is pollution. You see the stars at night. People care about this kind of thing in our area because Georgian Bay, the Bruce Peninsula, and the whole Canadian Shield, if you understand, is some of the oldest rock formations in the world where life basically started hopping out. You know, there's places Very in cool. Australia, there's places all over the world, but there's 700 UNESCO biospheres on the planet. So it's really That's special. Cool. Very neat. Okay, so we're going to move on and, and artists and other creative entrepreneurs were very visual, of course, and visual content's important to us and the internet as well. So my question is, question number two goes to Stu. Images are so important for artists and other creatives and small business owners to be found on the internet. What are the best practices for image optimization and so we can be found on Google and other search engines? Okay, so I'm how do we question. optimize and even explain to some people out there maybe that don't understand what it means to even optimize an image? That might be above some people's knowledge there. Right, and it's a good question, and there's two schools of thought on optimization. One is the visual. How good does the image look? How is it presented on your website or in social media? And then the other side of that is the tech part of putting an image on a blog will have meta tags associated with it that Google and Facebook and other search engines scrape from the back end of your website. I'm not gonna go into the weeds here because that's where Reg says, we can end up easily. <laughs> yes, we do. Already in the weeds. <laughs> but it's, it's actually pretty simple. Let me start with the visual part of it. And the visual part has dramatically changed in the last two years. 
one thing that I have to add to the, the precursor to this is that I built the machines that host these websites because I saw the flaws in other companies where when they were being hacked, packets of data gets transferred without secure layers and they, that's how Lori's website got hacked. That's what got me into this business, building a better machine. And we scale those machines to hundreds of thousands of visitors at a time. We could not build this club if I could not scale these machines. So serving the images is the same thing. You have a larger image because Google is saying now, we want a 1600 pixel wide image. Yeah, this, okay, so I'm gonna stop you there because that kind of blows my mind and right. makes me very uncomfortable because we've been conditioned as um, visual artists. I've been robbed. My content has been stolen before and I have found it like in Mexico or China being printed on things because they've stolen my images. So explain that because I'm very cautious of uploading really a very large image. So we need to keep them to what? The good news, 72 okay. DPI, the good, right? Yeah. The good okay. news, the good news is that Mac, Apple, and phones are very high resolution now and your content is dynamic, meaning the right. the image is going to shrink to the container that it's being viewed in. So people stealing your images are, of course, there's plenty of people out there that want to steal them, but the blog itself is repurposing the image in smaller resolutions, even though you gave it to Google and other platforms 1,600 pixels wide. The image that you're looking at, if they right-click it and try and download it, there's ways of preventing that, but they're not getting the raw image. Okay, good. Now, people may contest me on that statement, okay? If you want to drill down into the raw image online, you're pretty good at what you do. And I wouldn't worry about it for the most part. So the pixels per inch on a Mac retina display, and retina is a marketing term, but it also has to do with high density pixels. A Mac display is the best in the world. 300 pixels per inch, per inch is not DPI, it's pixels per inch. That's twice the resolution of an image if you're serving it at 800 pixels wide on a Mac, it's only gonna be three inches wide, but the display will expand it to make it look better for you. Oh, cool. So a couple people just, cause they're talking on this topic right now. Sharon says, what size was the image size to be for smaller resolution? So we explain that. And then also someone, Janet saying, she uses 300 DPI for a six by four. So. So if you render using standard web principles, 72 DPI is the web standard. Okay. okay. Yeah, sounds, you don't want to do 300 because then those are, those are higher quality, right? That, that sounds low, and, but to oh. answer the question properly, low? A, pixel, a pixel is a pixel is a pixel. Okay, a dot per inch in, in the real world doesn't have much to do with your display. The pixels per inch on the display has to do with how good it looks. Okay. okay. So I will tell you right now, I have technology, and Lori's interested in this, I know that, to crunch these images so that they're not two megabytes and they're half a megabyte or a quarter of a megabyte, which is what you want for the web so that they're speedy and the server can serve them up quickly. So I can take a 1600 uh, pixel wide image and crunch it down to a quarter of a megabyte, lose a little bit of resolution, but still deliver it. A, and, a and this is something, out. oh, sorry. You're gonna don't. share, you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna share this, <laughs> sorry. I don't wanna scare, I don't wanna scare people. I know. The 1600 wide pixel determination by Google is so that they can best present your images on Google search. And we'll get I understand. That. We'll get that in, into that too because of branding and whatnot. Right. I'm starting to do better with that. I'm at a thousand now, Stuart. Yeah. I was at 800 was the biggest I was willing. Now I'm at a thousand. So I'm creeping up and I'll let you well, all know how it goes. If, um, you, if you use Squarespace or Pix, excuse me, Wix, Wix or WordPress, these companies have containers that you're dropping your images in and it's expanding and contracting it for the device. So that part of the tech is all taken care of for you. Okay, good. Don't be, don't be scared about having 
you know, 800 pixel wide, low resolution image, you're going to be able to tell if it doesn't look good, put it that way. Okay. So then you said it was a true two prong answer and we wanted to still touch on alt tags for optimizing as well. Right. So explain what an alt tag is, please. And again, this is important for people from all different platforms to understand when you upload your image to your website, how you can optimize. So Stuart will explain a little bit more about that. During the media upload process in most uh, advanced softwares for website building now, people aren't building HTML, so they don't have to learn how to code this stuff. It says, what's the description? Is there a caption? What is the alt tag? The alt tag is going to be blank by default. The alt tag, believe it or not, if you don't have it, you're penalized by Google. And this is so oh, important. Oh, I didn't know that. Ugh. This is so important. A person like me, I'm sitting here in a webinar without hearing aids, but I wear hearing aids, but I can increase my volume on the computer for my own disability. Alt tags on Google mean that a visually impaired person can use a special computer and decipher what an image is because they may not be able to see it as good as you and I. So why would you be penalized? That's why, because you gotta, you're giving your, the meat of your blog in words and pictures has to be served to visually and hearing challenge people too. So put those alt tags in. And Lori described one yesterday perfectly. All I'm oh, asking good. for is what does, that, what does that image say? That's all you're saying in the plain English language and Google can translate it into 400 languages. But you put in there what that picture is and say, this is a picture of my little yellow bird sitting on the vase. Exactly. So that I am just still getting to where I understand alt tags myself. And I've been blogging for, well, since 2009. And I go back and look at my old alt tags and I used to do individual words and a comma. Da, 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 da. And so now recently you've just been saying, no, you just, like you said, make it a phrase kind of explaining the image so that someone can understand from what you've described, correct? Okay, so Which I didn't describe very well just now. Here's a, gold, <laughs> here's, a, here, here's a golden nugget, and I don't have to do a video of this to train people. When it says DSC underscore 0067 JPEG, yes. that is not a good file name. When you upload your DSC 0037 picture to your blog, rename it on your computer first. Oh, that's a really good point. And yes. what are you going to rename it to? Just use what you're going to intend to be the alt tag. So when the file comes into your blog, you can copy the file name into the alt tag and you're done. Okay, and so just one last question on this subject. What about someone like me that's been blogging for a long time and I didn't know what the heck I was doing years ago and so I have old images that are all wrong. Right. Can, what do I do? Do I go back well, in someday you know, and... The alt, the alt tag is saving you, and you can go through your images and re, okay. redo the alt tag. If it says DSC0097, just overwrite. Well, it won't be in the alt tag like that. It'll be either blank or it'll be what you put in before. Just put an alt tag in, and you'll be fine. Okay, great. Thank you. That was super interesting and informative. So I'm going to go back to Reg for a minute, and then after Reg is Taylor. So get ready, Taylor. So we are on question three for Reg. Reg, so what social media platforms do you think are best uh, for artists these days? And what can they do to stand out from the crowd? And, and I've seen people kind of in their comments going by are already asking that, like, what can they do to make a difference and get their brand seen? So a little bit of a two-pronged question. Well, we'll uh, get to the main thing you can do, like in a few of the most popular platforms, is hashtags. But we're, we're going to uh, sort of jump, jump to that a little bit later. Everyone right now is on, on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, and those are some really, really solid sites. Taylor is going to hit that. And I'll talk about Instagram and Facebook a little bit later. There, there's some sites, though, that artists uh, and, and photographers kind of gloss over or they, they, they've forgotten about that are really, really useful. A few that they just don't know about or haven't thought about in a while. Uh, Pinterest is one of them. The audience over, over at Pinterest is, is a, sort of a, a faithful one. So you can post content onto Pinterest and amazingly, 
uh, a year later or two years later, you, you can keep on getting people that reshare, repin that content, and look at later. It, it has what's uh, called a long tail. So uh, it's, it's great for artists, it, it's great for photographers to share their content over there. And a lot of people have sort of forgotten about it. They sort of, you know, have, haven't used it and haven't used it for a while. So it's I love really Pinterest. I'll yeah. just jump in for a second to say that I don't use it as much as I should. I'm not like a, a heavy Pinterest user, but I've had a, a profile over there for many years. And when I blog, I always go back after I've made a new blog post and I'll pin one of my photos to, to my Pinterest board about my blog post, latest blog post, whatever. And I get so much traffic from Pinterest. And it's amazing. And I just, I marvel at it because I really don't have to work very hard over there. So that's a really good tip, Reg. Pinterest is a really good place for visual artists. A lot of bang for your buck. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's amazing. It's like, um, I don't use it that often, but I'm, I'm getting like 50,000 views a, a, a month. Uh, from there you the go. I, you know, I posted over there. And, you know, I, I, I haven't touched it in, in, in a while. There are also some other platforms that people haven't thought of, like DeviantArt. Yes. They've been around since 2000. You sort of think uh, for traditional artists, if you're... you're Just the uh, name, right? Yeah, right. yeah. If you're, yeah, if you're <laughs> posting traditional art, what is uh, that? You, you, you wouldn't think it's, it's, a, it's, it's a good fit. But there are a lot of traditional artists over there, a lot of photographers that are sharing not only their, their content, but their tips. And, and it, it's, it's, it's been around, it's established. And so you sort of have to think outside the box and think where you can go to maybe get new eyeballs on your content. And that's one place you can go. There are a few others like Reddit and then uh, Imgur, and they, they have those two platforms right now. And, and, and Reddit uh, is a community unto itself. There are lots of ins and outs and lots of things that, that, that you know, that I, can, it's, I could go on for, for hours about Reddit. Also Twitch. And that's where, you know, uh, we're going to bring Steven on later uh, to talk about Twitch. But I thought Twitch was just for gamers. I thought it was a gamer platform. Yeah. And uh, no, no, there, there are people on there that are in the art community. I know. It's very exciting. I can't wait to talk to Steven about that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah and so, so those are a few of the uh, spots that I, I think could be really helpful for like a lot of artists. Good. Okay. Well, good. And then, and then YouTube as well. And oh, so... Yeah. Um, didn't mean, I, Taylor didn't mean to leave out with YouTube. No, he she, no, you just didn't want to leave steal anything from yeah. Taylor. So, <laughs> so Taylor, hi, are you ready to chat about YouTube? Hi, absolutely, I'm ready. Okay, we're finished, Reg, with that subject. Oh yeah. Moving on. Okay. All right. So I'm going to introduce Taylor, and um, she's my daughter-in-law and the mother of my two beautiful grandchildren. Hello. But Taylor is such a multi-talented young lady, and I'm bragging about her. But but I think you'll find it to be true after her presentation. So she is a talented digital artist who has worked on animated shows and video games, and I'm going to add Disney and the popular Ruby series. Uh, Red versus Blue and Darksiders. Uh, she's also an author of a drawing inspiration book called Art Prompts. And she's a voice actress, which she has the cutest voice. And um, for a famous cartoon that she's not allowed to say who she is the voice <laughs> for. Um, <laughs> and she's also reinvented herself being a young mother, being a stay-at-home working mom. She has started a YouTube business over the past couple years where she focuses on fish keeping. And she does these, she creates these beautiful custom betta fish. You know, those little fish in the jars um, that you see like at a, a pet store. She, she breeds those beautiful little fish. Yes, I do. And um, today she'll be talking about YouTube and how she took this niche hobby and made a successful channel. And she has over 80,000 subscribers and she can make 4,000 or well, four figures a month. Mm -hmm. And what else? And we're ready to hear how you do it all. Okay. Yeah. I'll be talking about YouTube. And, and how I made my channel, what makes them look good, what makes video look good, what you need, how to make it look high quality. I'm going to try to be going over a bunch of different points while kind of making it easy to absorb because my YouTube channel, it's called Simply Beta or Simply Beta. And I like to breed beta fish. It's just this little hobby I have. So I'm not necessarily talking about like a traditional art subject 
but I'm but you're a creative of- entrepreneur and that's the point of this. We don't all have to be fine artists. This, the, the same tips can help so many people. So okay. there you go. This, all this information can be taken and applied to your exactly. own passion project or your own hobby, your own interests. That's right. Now, I feel like you could turn up your volume a bit. Is there any oh. way? I don't know how, Reg. Uh, yeah, I, I, I yeah, don't have anything I can do. Hold on. Let's see if there's something I can do to check your audio here. And okay. people are saying and, they can't uh, see Taylor. So what? there's oh, a view. Where do they go? To, there's up in the upper right hand. Gallery view. Yeah. Gallery view. Click gallery view in the right upper hand corner of the Zoom stuff. Also, okay. uh, and, and you, I, Taylor, I, I, there's... I, there's a little arrow pointing up next to the microphone, and there's audio settings. You can adjust the uh, okay. input volume. Yeah. Thank you, I'll check Steven. my audio settings real quick. Okay, um, sorry. Is this any better? A little bit. Maybe I'm a little if, bit louder. If the per- people can turn up their own volumes. Okay, means. let's turn yeah. up the volume. And I'll try speaking a little bit louder, too. I'll try projecting a little bit more. There you go. All that right. sounds better. Okay. All right. Yeah, so I'm here to talk about YouTube and how you can take your hobby and and get yourself onto YouTube, which is it's it's a huge market essentially. If you're trying to market yourself as an artist or if you're trying to market yourself in whatever other hobby you're doing, YouTube's a really great way to do it. Yeah, you can get you can get a sizable audience and engaging like community out of it circulating around your YouTube channel. You can get a fan base or a consumer base or whatever your end goal might be. I highly recommend YouTube, although it does take a little bit of work and it takes some know-how to be able to make videos and make them look nice. And I'll be going into that too. Oh, good. And now can, may I ask, why did you choose YouTube over Vimeo? Just out of curiosity. Uh, YouTube is bigger. Okay. In my opinion, and it's much more social. Your average lay person, they use YouTube. Like your average person maybe doesn't necessarily use Vimeo. Vimeo caters towards higher quality video. And that's sort of all I know about it. I don't even Yeah, know. no, that's fine. And I would agree with that assessment. So I prefer YouTube too. It takes a little bit of that pressure off. Yeah. So it's more, I feel like YouTube's more casual than Vimeo. Okay. So how did you choose your subject then? Obviously, um, your fish. I chose my subject just because I wanted to. Oh, let's see. It's, it's something I felt passionate about and I decided, hey, I'm going to make a YouTube video uh, or a YouTube channel about it. And that, that's how I just chose mine. I really don't have too much too special of a, of a story behind that one. Oh, I that's wanted, great. I just wanted to take my hobby and make videos out of them. And then I wanted to talk a bit about how to choose your subject. Because okay. if you go through this effort of making a YouTube channel, you, this might seem like obvious um, information, but really think about your subject. What do you want your channel to be about? How is it going to stand out? What makes you and your content special? These are like the same principles apply to maybe making a blog or an Instagram account or a Twitter account. Like what is your niche? What is it? Because you need it on YouTube too. That's such a good point. I've always said it's kind of the who, what, when, where, why, how. And you kind of go through all of those, like who is your audience? What, are, what is your subject? You know, and, and this is stuff I can talk about later, but that is, that's perfectly in keeping with kind of a business model, so to speak. Absolutely. You need like, to think like a business person right away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what, what makes you interesting to watch? Like, are you in, incredibly informative about a subject? Are you entertaining? Are you personable? Are you just really great at videography? Like, what is it about you where people are going to want to watch you? How great. do you stand out? Because there are millions of YouTube channels. You definitely want to know what you're doing going into it, not just kind of living it. So what kind of equipment do we need just to get started without, you know, having to invest too much? What would you suggest? Yeah, for equipment, um, for cameras, it really doesn't take too much nowadays to be able to create good video content because most people have smartphones. Yes. Um, Smartphones generally have really good, very decent cameras on them that you can use to create content right away. You don't necessarily have to go out and spend like, 
a thousand dollars on a really nice like DSLR camera in order to be able to create content. Like I, I have used my iPhone a lot on my YouTube channel and this thing is from 2014. It's not new. It's not fancy, but it does the job. It does the job. That's great. Now, are you going to show us an example? Were you going to do a little tiny clip of what you've done? Can you share yeah. your screen? Because oh, it's absolutely. super cute. I can. Do you have something? Am I putting you on the spot? Nope. I have okay, it right good. here. I figured you'd ask. I'm good at putting people on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Oh, and I should note. I should note real fast that I'm not dissing on nice big cameras at all. Like this is my uh, Canon M50. I use this a lot for filming. Yes. Not dissing on them at all. I'm just saying that you could start right now with your phone and get really good results. Show how cool that is, how you have oh. that screen. Cause that's what's cool about, that's what I love about the Canons. They, they have that selfie screen thing, right? Uh, where it, there. Where it yeah. yes. turns and you could see yeah, yourself. Yeah, that's cool. Oh. So, so you can Very point handy. it at yourself, yes. Mm -hmm. nice. yeah. All right, I'll show my screen real fast. Okay. Let's make sure I do this right. There you go. Okay, I should be sharing my screen right now. Perfect. Yeah, that looks good. This is my YouTube channel. It's called Simply Beta, which is which is a, a, the proper way of pronouncing beta fish. Simply so simply beta. Simply and a play on simply better. It like is. simply beta. Definitely. <laughs> so this is me. Um this is like my hobby. It's how I how I present it. You can see that. I could scroll down. I can see playlists that I've made. I can s go over here. I can look at my videos. I present all my thumbnails in a similar way. Like they all have a theme where somebody who follows me can instantly look at my thumbnail and recognize it for me. I also have an Instagram, Simply Beta Fish, where I, I share a lot of different photos of like my fish and the fish that I breed and my fish that I keep and my fish room. I have, a, I have a room for my fish. I'm a little obsessed. <laughs> and I also, from my YouTube channel, like I link, I, I link over to my Instagram and a lot, like in the description of all my videos, I link over to my store. So people who watch my videos, you know, if they like it, they subscribe to me, they can also see the links that go over to this, my store where they can see that the, the, the supplies that I sell and the fish that I sell. So where's that store? Is that on, Oh, I should, is that through Instagram? Com. Simply oh, that's, oh, that's your own website. store. Okay. Okay. Cool. So my YouTube channel drives a lot of the traffic to my website and to my various social media platforms, which is another reason why I absolutely suggest if, if it interests you to make a YouTube channel. Okay. And so what are a few of the best practices? Like you just were talking about the continuity and I mean, you're, you're such a pro cause uh, you guys, she has an unfair advantage because she is a computer digital artist. So she's yeah. able to, we're, I'm not going to look that good. I don't, you guys, some of you've probably seen my YouTube channel. Mine's very raw and I don't think I'll ever um, graduate to that effect unless I hire somebody, but but we still, even though we're not as polished as you, we still can get a lot of traffic and even monetize eventually. So, so you have a beautiful look. What about, you have some ideas about SEO titles and keywords and tags? Cause, I do. okay, that, yeah, well, that's super interesting. Optimizing your video. All right. Yeah. Optimizing video. Should I talk a little bit more about uh, best practices? Sure. All that's part of that, okay. I would think. Yes. Oh, Okay. I did want to mention that if you're interested in starting a YouTube channel, one of the best things that you should really pay attention to is your audio quality. Oh, um, yeah. Because you can have a mediocre looking video, but if you have great audio quality, people will still watch, people will still listen. But if, it, if it's the other way around, if you have bad audio yeah. quality, people aren't going to want to stick around. Right. Um, that's just a known thing. Absolutely known thing. Like for me, I use microphones. Like this is a microphone that I actually stick on top of my DSLR and it makes my audio a lot more clear, a lot more crisp. I also have microphones that go with your phone. Um, so maybe if I was filming far away, it would still have really good crisp audio. Very important to do that. That's a good tip. And then I um, I'd say the next most important piece of equipment besides a way to film, a way to get good audio is to have like a tripod something to hold your camera steady because audiences don't want to see, you know, a lot of wiggling around, a lot of moving. It's distracting. It's right. weird. 
it makes you dizzy, I wouldn't recommend that. Okay. So get a tripod too for whatever you do. Okay, those are good points to be made. Mm -hmm. You know what's amazing, if I can jump in there? Sure. It's a Google product. And a lot of people are like, Google. But AdSense is a platform that serves ads on people's popular sites. And the best practices are exactly what she's talking about. Do what you love and do it good, and you will make money. That's right. That's and you're an, ad, you're an AdSense expert, and that's a whole nother topic someday. Yeah. But yes, he's yeah. very good at monetizing through that. Um, you, can, you can monetize your YouTube channel as soon as you get a thousand subscribers. Yeah. Okay. Able to monetize, which means the ads that run before your video, you just get a little piece of the pie of the ads right. and it can add up if you put the time and the, what did you call it? Uh, sweat equity. Yes. Into yeah. making a YouTube channel. You can start to get a return after you mon you're able to monetize. Sure. Great. And then, so another way to be found is through the keywords, the title and, and they don't use hashtags over at, at YouTube. But they, they use started keywords. To, oh, they do? Mm -hmm. You can put hashtags in, in your video description. Oh, right. Right. But are they searchable or anyway? So but any anyway. tips on that, on how to um, do the titles and stuff? Yes, I do. So when it comes to people clicking on your video, uh, your title is incredibly important. Your description, your video description is very important and also your keywords. You could put your searchable keywords is a whole nother category. You add those in as you upload your videos. For example, I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out how to explain this in like an easy to understand way. For example, if I went through all the video or all the trouble of making a beautiful, well edited video about me doing something, me painting a boat, it's amazing. It's like a time lapse. I'm narrating over it. It's fantastic. And I upload it onto YouTube. And if I don't put like some thought into making a good title and a good hashtags or keywords, a good description, nobody's going to find my video and nobody's going to click on it. Right. If I were to just title it boat, nobody's going to, or boat painting, nobody's going to find me because all the other channels who have boat painting videos who are huge channels are going to rank above mine. <laughs> so put, be descriptive, put what the video is. Like I would put boat painting, watercolor, time-lapse, and I'd make it pretty specific. And I'd put those okay. in there. It's, it, it seems obvious, but a lot of people don't do this to their videos and they're not found. And I'd also yeah. repeat those same things in the description. Take your title, reword it, repeat yourself with the same kind of searchable keywords in the description without making it sound weird or boring or the exact same thing as your title. How many keywords are we allowed to have? Do, do you uh, know by chance? It's character based. You can have a okay. certain amount of characters. Okay. Okay. And good so tip. I would take that video and then for my, for my tags, which are my hashtags, my keywords, my searchable things, I'd put right. boat time-lapse, watercolor time-lapse of a boat. Like I'd spend some time um, crafting some various searchable okay. keywords. Okay, great. It's Those something are great you have to pay attention to. Absolutely. So we have, we have a couple questions. We wanted to take, are, anything else you want to add before we answer some questions from the group? Let's see. I did want to touch on editing. Okay, kind of, yes. Oh, yeah. uh, if you look at my, my channel, Simply Beta or Simply Beta, my videos are pretty highly edited. And yes. I feel like it's important in how you present yourself. Okay. You take out any pauses, anything that's not applicable to what I'm talking about, any ums and ahs. If I stumble over my words, I edit that out. That's an important I do jump tip. cuts. And you have to keep in mind your viewers on YouTube, they have very short attention spans. Yep. Yes. <laughs> and yep, if you take too long to get to the point, they are going to click away and find something else to entertain them. If you take too long to go over something, if you, you're, you're pausing, you're talking too slow, like this uh, can uh, all... What's your favorite yeah. editing tool? Do you, do you have one? My personal favorite, I use Adobe products, but this is okay. something that I've been using professionally, like with, with my, my career and whatnot. I might call it a little advanced for somebody who's just starting. Oh, editing. yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. Premiere Pro, right? 
Yeah, so I might recommend Adobe Rush is a great way to okay. start editing and you can actually use Adobe Rush on your phone. Like you could sit there, you could get great content with your phone, maybe with your little phone microphone. Taking a could... note. Yeah, I told <laughs> you, you did... Lori, I told you that one. Adobe <laughs> Rush. Edit it. I, yeah. I know. You can edit it and render <laughs> it on your phone, put it straight to YouTube with Adobe Rush. It's something you do have to pay monthly for. It's like $9, but highly recommend it. Also iMovie, if you have a Mac. Um, That's what I use. So many things to, that you could use. It's hard for me to like pinpoint specific ones. Okay. That's great. Well, good. So we have okay. some questions. Are, sure. So there's some in the chat um, and there's some in the Q and A. So how shall we? Um, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Just go ahead and uh, we can, we can grab a couple here and see sure. if they're okay. Uh, it, uh, how about is monetizing after acquiring a thousand subscribers? an automatic thing on YouTube or uh, uh, is it asked oh. for by the channel owners? Good tip. If you have or over a thousand subscribers and there's more stipulations to that, you have to have a certain amount of hours watched on the channel. You are, it, it's unlocked. So you have to then go into your settings. You have to set up the, the enable it. And then you have to hook up your AdSense account to it. So you actually have to go in and do it after you get a thousand subscribers. So there's a way to find out that information though within YouTube. Like I, there's probably a link that says how to monetize, right? And then you just have oh, to absolutely. go in and follow the prompts. Yeah, it's back. It's in your dashboard, and it's very in your easy dashboard. Setup. Yes. Okay. Good question. So what else do you see, Reg? Uh, let's see. I've got one from Maria. Sorry, uh, she came first. I should have uh, uh, had this one before, but uh, it's a tailor. I've decided to rebrand and start a YouTube channel with. Uh, 20 to 30 minutes uh, art lessons geared toward middle and high school teenagers. I'll be launching my channel this Friday. Yikes. That's exciting. Any, any tips for this newbie? <laughs> oh, gosh. Tips. There's so many tips I could give. It's hard to pick one. I would say don't get discouraged if YouTube growth starts fairly slow. This is a good opportunity to take your other social media platforms and share them, share your stuff on Facebook. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, whatever you do, and get people coming to your channel. And it might be slow to begin with. It might be slow. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I do have I do have a bunch of tips. Um, <laughs> it's it's almost like a common pitfall category I have in my head. Pitfalls. Uh, what what not to do? Okay. And these are things like don't be boring. Don't have super long pauses. Don't take too long to do things. <laughs> don't have bad video quality or audio quality or bad lighting where, you know, it's just, it looks terrible and it's too dark. Don't have bad looking thumbnails or titles or descriptions, which I kind of went over. Don't get frustrated. If, if channel growth starts out slow, pretty much everybody starts out pretty slow. And then one big thing is don't ignore the community. I would say be a part of the community. Go and find That's other you. channels. Yeah, go find other channels like uh, Reg was saying, which do this and interact with the communities and you're going to get organic growth that way and you'll get commenters and definitely engage. Don't leave comments unanswered and be consistent as well. Channels do much better if maybe you could be consistent and do a video a week or a video every two weeks instead of like, oh, uh, two videos here. And the next year I'll do two more videos. No. If you have, if, if it's very inconsistent, you're not going to get very good results. Mike. And that, that's great. And then someone here, Peggy, I think that is, um, asked about what mics are needed. I, I know you showed, do you have a brand you like? I personally like the Rode VideoMic Pro for my DSLR, if that's what you're using. Can this you say that one more time? The Rode VideoMic Rode. Pro. Oh, okay. Perfect. It's, it's a nice directional <laughs> microphone <clears throat> okay let's see i think it was maybe close to two hundred dollars but it's a fan it's one of the best investments you can make is good audio quality and then when it comes to your phone you can find some pretty nice ones depending on what what brand of phone you have i do a little bit of research because right. i don't know as much about phone microphones i just have a little one that you stick on your collar and it's corded oh, okay. um, and it works perfect. it works well perfect well good well, Taylor, thanks so much. That was just so much knowledge. Yeah, absolutely. That you shared. Yeah, I hope, I, hope I was job. able to come across nice and clearly. If there's any more questions, just go ahead and 
let me know. In yeah. The chat just and... type them in uh, either chat or question. Where's it easier? Either way, I guess. Q and A box. The Q and A makes it a little easier. Yeah. A little easier. But you, can, you, can, okay. you can just become a fixture in the club. <laughs> there you go. Become a fixture. We'd love your tips within the club, Taylor. Right. That would be so much fun. <laughs> You could have your own group someday, but anyway. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Taylor. Thank you. Thank you. Going. Hang on if you want. You don't have to go anywhere. Okay. So, Reg, we are going to continue the conversation about videos and images still with regards to, we just learned a lot about the power of video uh, using YouTube, but you've been telling me the power of video just across all the social sites. So, can you talk a little bit about um, video versus still images, and and we'll t what do you have to say about video? Well, well I, I mean, th this will date me because I've been around a while. But yeah, like, like I, I, I'm a Twitter guy. I started off on Twitter back in 2007, I think, uh, 2008, something like that. You know, it, 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 it was 140 characters, and and you know that's the what could get attention. Then, then you, everyone moved to images, you know, across platforms, you know, to, to, to get people's attention on Facebook, get people's uh, attention on Twitter. You'd share an image. But, you know, uh, now video is everything. Uh, video is king. And so uh, the algorithms will actually push up video on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, uh, uh, a, a lot more. But most people know this. You know, they've been pushing out videos for a while. It's changed even more. So now, if you're on Facebook, Facebook Live content actually is, is seen by more people and because the algor algorithm pushes that up. So I think the stats are people will watch Facebook Live video for three times as long, and it gets 10 times the reach as other content. So okay, it, so say that again because um, they'll push a live video to the top of the heap over just the other uploaded mm -hmm. content then? To yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because um, uh, you, uh, people have sort of moved beyond like uh, standard content. They, they want to get that genuine interaction. So Facebook uh, Live is one way of doing that because they're seeing live content and, and, and they're like, wow, it, it, it's a great way to uh, reach out to your audience and, and, and share organic content. Also, on, on, on the Instagram side, there's uh, IGTV. I, I know right. we've talked about that a couple of times, Lord. And, and for, for the longest time, you can just have 60 seconds of video on Instagram, the short format video. A few years ago, Instagram decided to uh, uh, create a product called, I guess, Instagram Television. Uh, they have a standalone app for it, but now it's actually bundled and part of Instagram. You, you can actually upload a 60-minute video and... Instagram is pushing that content, so their, their, their algorithm is pushing that up quite uh, a, a lot higher than their short formatted uh, video content. So that's a, another great way to reach your audience. Now, everyone shouldn't be doing a 60 minute video, that's a little bit too long. Uh, you should use some of the best practices that Taylor mentioned uh, about uh, uh, video on YouTube. You, you, you want to have it interesting, you, you want to ha have it captivating. And, in a lot of cases on Instagram, you want to make it short. So maybe 10 minutes at, at, at the longest, maybe 15. But only if you're like, you know, master of the universe over there, you can maybe share a 60 minute video talking about like, you know, your mastery of like a, a photography or your mastery of arts or, or whatever. But yeah, so keep it short. So those are a couple of my favorites. Well, good. Yeah, go ahead, Lauren. Oh, no. And then we were, so is that. So you're a big believer right now in video, just across the board. Yeah, yeah, video is huge, and and it's a great way. Uh, it, it's, it's a great way uh, if it's live video, uh, if you do it through Facebook Live or like Instagram Stories, Facebook Stories. Uh, th th those are two great ways to organically reach out to your audience. Lori is amazing with her stories. I wish I could craft them as well. She says I'm a social media guru, but hey, I'm not a guru of everything. Lori is a master of Instagram Stories. I mean, you'll see her dogs. You'll see uh, like like cute little uh, gifs all the time. You know, I'm I'm kind of boring. I like I'll drone on about like uh, you know uh, some some. Uh, well, I'll share a little really... bit. I'll just chime in for a moment about kind of how I see the way I do my brand on Instagram. Not that I'm an expert compared to a lot of people, but it's going pretty well. So you know, they say you know if you're an artist, you should use your. Uh, 
wall. Is it the wall? What is it? Your profile? What is that called? Where everybody, the tiles are of all your art. And timeline, stuff. I guess. Yeah. Timeline, you know, just be consistent and, and have kind of a, I, my personality is I'm not fully consistent as Reg has been helping with Instagram and, and it's hard for me to just always post only my art because I don't just do my art. So I try and do images that are a little more, I wouldn't say formal, but a, a, a little bit more professional looking to go on my wall. And then within my stories is where I kind of have fun and show my personality and show what I'm doing and, and that sort of thing. And that kind of seems to work well to get to know my audience and they get to know me. And I, I do my best over there to answer everybody. Sometimes I miss people, but I have a lot of fun and it is time consuming, but it is rewarding. And I know many of you out there right now, we're friends on Instagram. So thank you um, for being here. And I hope we're helping you today. So anyway, I just wanted to share that because you just spoke about my stories. So I thought I'd share a little bit more. Um, no, no. And, and you, you do a great job over there. And it, thanks. It's, uh, it, it's one of those things, too, that people just gravitate toward that type of organic content. And yeah, so it's really I know. It, it is fun. And especially while we're in quarantine, so to speak, just to see that people still are out there living their lives and doing it safely. And we can still, even though we're social distancing, we're getting creative about how we can get outside and socialize at a safe distance and that sort of thing. So, so anyway, but images, I still love images. I love photography as do, you know, so many people that are on Instagram and these other visual platforms. So um, we're still doing images, right, Reg? I mean, yeah, yeah, of course. what are some of the best practices about posting images then to the social media channels? Well, there, 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 there's so many, but you can, you can on Instagram, for example, uh, you can only, only uh, you're limited to your file size and it's, uh, you know, square images are, are, do really well. On Facebook, you can post like 16 by nine, uh, a larger format file sizes that, you can pop out and, and examine the, 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 the whole, the whole thing about, uh, social media. I, I don't know. It, it, it's so, so diverse. Uh, right. It's, it, it's so one thing you have always said is don't use a watermark. And in fact, we forgot to talk about that Stuart. We were talking, going to talk about whether you should watermark, um, photos or not. So jump in on this topic for a moment, Stuart, about watermarking, versus branding. I like the way you call it branding for images. I kind of shanghaied from the, from you. Is that okay? Reg? No, no, it's okay. Go ahead. Okay. And then think about what your feeling would be about social media with those images being watermarked as well. So Stuart, would you uh, mind just jumping in on that? Because we did forget to talk about that back on images with you. Right. So somebody asked in the sidebar too, when I was talking about images earlier about Photoshop and, and rendering your images and any platform that you use to manipulate your images is, you know, in your comfort area. Taylor mentioned that she uses Adobe products. They are more complicated and there's more time invested in perfecting things. But once you speed that process up, you can do things like this little uh, branding box here. And I dragged Lori into making this 2020 club visually so people could identify with it this is exactly the same thing you're going to see that little blue box everywhere you go and it's not going to be exactly the same shape or size or say the same things in it but it's familiar it took us less than 30 days to really once i got the artwork that is actually a hand-drawn pencil sketch of Lori's that i photoshopped okay so this is what to me watermarking is brand your content and underneath that box on your image i'm going to show you how to batch process in the blogs later how to put that on 50 images in like 15 seconds once you have it all set up so the branding watermark i i i call it it's you're you're killing two birds with one stone to put it bluntly okay Good. I like that. My computer froze and I was off the air for a moment. So, but I think I know what you just talked about. I've lost all the Q and A's, but anyway, hopefully they'll, they'll roll back in. So anyway. Well, the, the, the branding and watermarking, what Good. Reg 
what Reg didn't say and I didn't say is that on Instagram, people don't want a lot of branding. But on Google, in image search, it's fine to have your uh, website name in the lower right-hand corner of your image if it's not too big. So as long as it's legible, it's fine. What Reg was talking about is you don't want this huge across the diagonal watermark. Right, image. right. I mean, it, it's a huge problem. On, on, uh, I, I mean, I, I understand uh, the need for artists to protect their intellectual content because no one wants to have that stuff stolen. But no. um, as a social media manager that, 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 that shares content from other users onto their, their brand's channel, I just, I won't reshare something with a watermark because uh, first I have to pr protect my brand. Uh, second, it just, it doesn't look good. So that that's just like a no-no on, on a platform like Instagram. It's a no-no on, on, on social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter. I mean, it, it's like if you can l leave a watermark off, you know, it's a best practice over there. But like Stu okay. was saying, having that, that brand on like your blog post, right? It is, 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 is great because, I mean, it's like uh, people will see where that image came from. Yeah, it is great. When you're searching like Lori McNee, if, if, or if you're searching, no, what's better is if you're like searching tree paintings or something and then right. all these and, tree paintings pop up and then you don't know whose that is and it says Lori McNee, then, you know, that, that's a great way of driving traffic back to your site. Right. So. But it does take a little bit of work and that's where some of that software comes in handy. And that's one of your upcoming tips that you're going to share within the 2020 Club, Stuart, which will be really great. So, so that's good. So are we ready to move on and introduce Stephen? Yes. I think we are. Stephen, thank you for being okay. patient. Yeah, no kidding. Thank you. Stephen. Yeah. I'm going to be a doctor. I have a lot thank, of patience. Thank you. So, <laughs> Thursday. So I'm, I'm here till ahead. Thursday. <laughs> yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> Uh, anyway. Yeah, so hello. Um, hi, I'm hi. Morrison. So you and I had a nice chat, and I haven't gotten that edited yet because my computer is not working very well. And so I have to wait till my new computer gets Bad here. We'll get that up on the 2020 Club here shortly. But anyway, so here we have Stephen Yavarsky, and obviously he's going to talk about Twitch and Patreon, and he's got a couple other things he's going to throw in as well, how he uses them to brand and make money. And so we're fellow brand ambassadors for Royal Talons. And we met a couple weeks ago now on a giant Zoom call together with the Royal Talons ambassadors. And he was talking about sharing ideas with all of the ambassadors about, you know, ways to get through this difficult time in 2020 that we're going through. And he um, was talking in detail about Twitch and Patreon, which uh, I found very interesting. So I interviewed him in a video, which will be on the 2020 Club shortly. But here we have him anyway, to discuss that um, with us. So he's from New Jersey, and his works have been featured in multiple exhibitions, including venues as the Ray Contemporary Galleries, Swing Galleries, Main Street Galleries, the Selma Gundy Club. He's received many accolades, including the Scholarship Award from the American Artist Professional League and the annual Art Renewal, Renewal Center Salon. And <laughs> that's a lot of nice accolades. And he's a very talented artist. So, so <laughs> Twitch and Patreon. Yeah, um, so, um, so we're excited here about these alternative platforms. I know there's quite a few people in the audience that are dabbling in them or considering it. So what is Patreon? What is Twitch? And just go for it and tell us all so, about it. Yeah, so Twitch is it's a, it's basically like YouTube, except it's pretty much primarily live. You can do it in the same way you would do YouTube, where you would set up whatever you're doing, whether it be a, a podcast. And, you know, primarily also, it's a lot of gaming, too. So it's, it's very un, unorthodox seemingly at least that artists would be on it but it's actually a huge booming artist population that is on there bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger it's actually artists are the biggest population exponentially growing right now it's one of the biggest populations on twitch so i'm going to share the screen real quick if i can do that and there we go so this is this is my channel right now you might notice actually the quality on the video is probably really bad right because um not bad oh, okay 
there's, I think it's a little worse for me right now because of the fact I'm, I'm streaming to you guys also. Right. So this is my channel, basically. Uh, one of the cool things about Twitch also, if you follow other people that you like, enjoy watching, what I like to do and what other Twitch streamers like to do is they like to auto host or just host in general. And this is one of the, the guys I, I watch and I enjoy watching. He, he plays a lot of metal music. I like metal and he... Huh. He paints these little miniatures that I also enjoy playing with and painting myself. So this guy is a huge enjoyment of the website that I like. So I pay tribute to him by sharing his stuff on mine. And that's something that'll play while I'm not on. That's a little way of having something on your channel where otherwise it would just be like a blank screen and it shows your followers or would be followers what you're interested in in another way now for your channel you can see, basically you can see how there's a edit panels thing right here you can set up yeah. different panels for different links and whatnot you can display your artwork i have my some of my little artwork links over here and i can go to different stores i can go to my website i can go to uh, oh, that's cool. Media. I even have like a little thing set up for while I'm streaming. If somebody wants to send me food, I can have them send me food because I love eating and <laughs> I especially love pizza. So I, have, I basically only have pizza set up on there. Not right now because I'm not at my my place that I normally live. I'm with my girlfriend right now. So I also haven't been streaming for a little while. <laughs> but but I link it. it you want to weave everything as with everything else. You want to weave everything together. So you want to weave all your social media together. You want to weave all your links together. You can just talk about who you are. Like I mentioned Royal Talons. I mentioned what I use for hardware because people are interested in that. Now, one of the biggest things that you're going to want to do while you're streaming is engage with the chat live because they're talking with you live and just like with YouTube or any other social media where they're going to be talking to you, they're talking to you in real time while you're doing something. So it's a little bit of a split in your concentration. concentration yeah, but you get used to it after a while. And you so get are you typing answers or are you just speaking while you're you can, uh -huh. You can type answers, mm -hmm. but if you haven't like That would be hard. You just say it, honestly. Yeah. And that's the best way to do it. I, ha I have, so the other, the other thing with Twitch is you can archive the videos, which I'm going to play this just in the background while I'm talking to you guys, but you can archive the videos, but yeah, you want to engage with the chat as you are receiving chat. And that's what's going to get people interested. Y you interacting with them, becoming a friendly face, for them to talk to and talk with. And for me, I like sharing information about art and what I know about art. And I like just sharing what I'm doing. So um, you also, you told me that you use this for teaching quite a bit. A little and, bit, yeah. And you, but when you use Twitch, you or anybody, you said that one of the best practices is to kind of treat it like you have your own show right. and have a time that people can jump on and expect to find you, that sort of thing, correct? Yeah, so on the sidebar right here, you'll notice that I have a bunch of different people showing up and these are just different channels that um, I follow. And okay. these people are on at the same exact time every single day, basically. Right. So you don't have to be on every single day, but if it's a Tuesday on whatever time, like five, five o'clock and you're going on live and you're doing that consistently week after week after week, Tuesday at five, Tuesday at five, Tuesday at five, people are going to expect, oh, Steve's going live. Let's check out Twitch or Lower is going live. Let's check out, check out Twitch. And they know that they can go to a show and engage with somebody that they know to be a friendly face. And so that's a real, that's a really really key thing about Twitch, consistent schedule. And it doesn't matter what time necessarily of day because Twitch is worldwide. So you, it, you could stream five in the afternoon, five in the morning, 12 in the afternoon, 12 at night, 
or like even four in the morning, it doesn't matter. You're going to get people from across the world checking out that basically what is live right now. If I go into discover and I see there, oh, browse. If I go into art, right? It's going to show who is first, who are you following and who applies to you? Maybe you clicked on them and they want to show you again, but it tiers it based on who has the most viewers and they put those towards the top. Mm -hmm. So as you start gaining more and more of a following more and more of a regular audience, you'll be more towards the top of that category. You just put, uh, when you go to stream, you can pick a category. Uh, if you're streaming art, obviously you'd pick art. And so you do you optimize top. these like YouTube as well? Is there a way to optimize? So, um, you put it in the right category or their keywords or hashtags again, that help yeah. push to the top. Yeah. I can get into that in a moment when I show okay. you the software. That oh, okay. You use. Great. But yeah, you can scroll through these and at any point of the day, you're going to see some art that, or whatever channel, whatever category you want. And a lot of it is geared towards, you know, a younger crowd, but there's also, you know, an older crowd that joins in too at this point because it's, it's, it's getting more and more well known as a platform that artists can, can go to. Yeah, I think that's um, great. And then how do you monetize? So after you gain, I think it's 50 followers or wow. something like that. Huh. And a, so it's, there's a dashboard basically. Let me go, let me see if I can go to my dashboard. Creator dashboard. I hope I don't put anything too. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know where it is right now because I haven't seen it in a while. And I think they changed the website a little bit, so it's not on the, on the top of my head. But there is a there is a dashboard, and there's little goal points that you have to reach. But it's like I think it's 50 followers and a consistent three viewers a stream, okay. like an average of three viewers per stream. Okay. And if you do that and you stream enough times in a 30 day period with keeping those, those key points, those, you know, three consistent viewers for stream. You qualify. You qualify Good. for what's called affiliate ship. So okay. if I go, or let me go back to my Twitch, Twitch. Okay. So when you are a, oh, let me go to actually his channel. And a lot of this, Stephen, we don't have to go real deep with it because we have this videotaped or, or video, but and I want to get to Patreon as well. Right. So, and how they work together. But oh um, yeah, so yeah, we, you can subscribe through that, and that okay. would basically be a tier of different things. So you, you can see that right there, different tiers, and that would be a monthly thing that you would get when somebody subscribes to you. In terms of software what you would use let me switch stop share and then i gotta go back to share. my son's been using it for gaming at which traditionally twitch was started for gamers right. where they would they get on there and show their skills and he's using it now just kind of part-time while the kids are in bed or whatever and playing a little bit to decompress and he's making money doing yeah. that <laughs> so i know it's cool yeah, so people, there is money to be made are like uh like unreal like almost unrealistically generous on twitch to the point yeah. that you can set up like a donate button right and people will just donate to you like the last time i streamed maybe a week maybe a week or so ago it's, it's tough to find time to stream right now because i'm not in my house but somebody just gave me 30 bucks and, he, and they commented go buy a pizza and wow oh, that's so nice 30 bucks yeah, just for really like cool. doing nothing and there's different that's very cool. The more prevalent you are, the better, the more uh, consistent that is too. But let me, I'm sharing this right now, right? The, you see the OBS yeah. layout thing? So if I have, I can set this up. This is a free software that you can, you can just download off the internet. And what this does is kind of like lagging. I don't know why, but you can set up all these different things, two cameras, three cameras, how many cameras you want. And that So you have all, to be technical, a little bit technically savvy to do this, correct? 
not really because this really? this software is so straightforward that it makes it overly easy. Like so if is I was this going the Twitch software itself right now. No, this is this, this is, is open OBS. source open source free um, OS. Not necessarily. Okay. Uh, OBS. OBS. I was right. And OBS. you can use this to also stream to Twit, to YouTube, and Facebook. Oh. Okay. So this is okay. a good software just to have. If even if you don't necessarily want to go to Twitch, you can use it to go to Facebook or YouTube Live also. And so you can let also me just, let me just. So I'm going to just a layman question yet again. So you sign up for Twitch, but you can't access Twitch unless you use software to stream. Is that what that means then? Right. Yeah. You okay, have to so, use a, an outside program. You can't just go to the website and stream to it, unfortunately. Okay. okay that's okay. So o, OBS, o, Open right. Broadcasting Source. Open right? Broadcasting Software, yeah. Software. Okay. But yeah, but if you get the Streamlabs OBS, that is super straightforward. Okay. And it's easy to set up all the different, all the different sources like the video capture. Okay, great. Uh, if you want to capture your background of your computer, you can do that. If you want to capture awesome. whatever, you can do that. Okay, um, so can we move on to Patreon only because we're yeah, gonna yeah. need to wrap things up here shortly. All right, so Patreon. Let me go back to here. It's hard because you're screen. so full of knowledge, but yeah, we'd love to have you back. I just to focus only on this. <laughs> No, we're going in the weeds is what we say, right? It's yeah, so easy to go into the weeds. Into the weeds. Yeah. We're in the weeds, Reg. Uh, I know. There we go. <laughs> so Patreon is really cool because it's similar to how you, if you were to get affiliated with Twitch or it's kind of like I, I relate it mostly to if you were to go on PBS and watch something on PBS, how they have like, oh, if you like this program, please make a donation, whatever. And there's different tiers depending on what the donation is, right? Right. Uh, Patreon does that also for the creator and it's directly to the creator. And so this is my... Uh, that's my your Patreon. page, your profile. This so what's how... cool, it's not just for artists. Patreon, I mean, it is creative artists, but not just fine artists. Like you can be a musician. Or yeah, it's for everybody. Author. It's for anybody or... that's creating yeah. anybody, you, anything. Um, all kinds of people. You just get kind of creative about it. I mean, even someone such as yourself could be sharing tips, uh, social media tips or tech tips or whatever. Right. right. So yeah, that's what's cool. You can get very creative here. And I know a lot of people have been moving over here and making some good money. Yeah, I have a couple friends that have uh, made very, very nice strides with Patreon. The same thing goes for Patreon as it does with any other social media. As I also mentioned with Twitch, as Reg said, with a lot of things, you have to be consistent, consistent, consistent. I slack on that a little bit, but you get the point. With, with Patreon, what's cool is depending on the tier, you can un you have it, uh, posts that can unlock for certain tiers. So for instance, I have this, I've not, I'm not logged in right now. So you can see that some of these things that I have are not able to be seen, which I think is pretty cool because it gives a little teaser. It gives a little uh, idea of what the person that might be becoming a patron to you, a subscriber to you, what they would get. And they get an idea of that before they actually put in their uh, So you have a, like a wall and kind of right. what they get if they oh, decide yeah. to become it's a, a little patron. bit of a paywall. So let me right. quickly right. Uh, log in. And then you do, you use Patreon in corporation with Zoom to do teaching, correct? Right. Yeah. So yeah. I have. Oh, that's cool. One yeah. of my, one of, well, one of my tiers is not really necessarily one tier. It's actually a couple different tiers. I have basically an apprentice tier where I have, if they subscribe to that tier, they have an access of either one, two, or four hours of one-on-one -on -one time with me. Another thing I'm doing now is starting on the first of the month, of this coming month, I'm doing a basically a group sit-in kind of 
bas basically a group apprenticeship kind of deal where it's open to a wider range. So you don't have to be a full blown apprentice of a tier of mine, which is obviously more. You can be a, a lower tier that is less money that you can sit in on a group kind of class, do your work, you can ask me questions if you need it. And it's kind of like a, a very relaxed kind of class setting. Okay. And oddly enough, these Zoom classes have been working really nicely. They're very close to in-person classes. It's, it's really, really impressive how well a Zoom class can work. That's but yeah, that's, that's Patreon. You can see how like this opens up and all of a sudden I can show you, you can actually all see- All your tutorials. Mm -hmm. That's tutorials. great. Tutorials, if you make a tutorial, you can put it on uh, YouTube as like an unlisted video uh -huh. and then you can put it okay. on or, or a Vimeo or whatever uh, service you want and you can put that on to a thing. So like I can make a mock post real quick and I can go in here. I'm just going to put some text, text, whatever. And when I go to publish it, when I go to publish it, I can select public, that's to anybody, even people that aren't supporting me. I can do the patrons only, which is all my patrons. Or oh, I can say, okay, I have these guys I want to select. Or oh. maybe maybe just these guys I want to select. And that gives everyone a personalized experience of what I'm offering. That's wonderful. Which is really cool. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of this. Sorry and, for rambling. <laughs> uh, no, it's great. It's so much information and everyone's yeah, probably, definitely. you know, but it is uh, a lot. Uh, it's an alternative um, to the mainstream social media channels that we're all accustomed to. I'm really excited to check it out more so. And I know that there's a lot of people out there that are going to find that very valuable and so in a nutshell, what's the quickest way they can jump in? Do you think they should start with Patreon or Twitch? Or do you have an opinion about that? Uh, Patreon, I think if you're an artist, you should just make one. Okay. There's no reason to not do it. If you can upload pictures, if you can upload images, you don't necessarily need to upload videos to or anything to right. be on Patreon. It's just some something that if you're making something and somebody wants to support you in a way on a monthly basis is something that they can have a way to do that with twitch and everything else you can do twitch with your phone there's the stream uh stream labs app the the program that i mentioned okay. stream labs obs they also make a mobile app that oh, you can get it on your uh android or iphone uh phone that makes it doable that you can do right from your phone. You yeah. set up a little tripod for your phone and you can stream right through there. Phones nowadays are so powerful. You can yeah. record really amazing video with your phone. Right, right. And, that's uh, great. So don't worry if you don't have a webcam, don't worry about that. You just do it. Just it, well, good. How do, you do it and who well, cares? Thank you so much, Stephen. I really appreciate your generosity and your time <laughs> no problem. very much. <laughs> And so you can find Stephen Yaborski on Twitch and Patreon and his website. And um, so thank you so much. And if you want yeah, to hang definitely. on and see if there's some questions to answer mm -hmm. shortly, we're, we're getting closer to the end. I mm -hmm. wanted to ask Stuart just real fast before we talk to uh, Reg about hashtags, just real quickly, we were going to touch a little bit more about videos, but I think we covered it actually yeah. already. But I do want to ask you because this is something Stephen has like the Patreon button on his website so people can directly go from his website to Patreon and donate money or watch, you know, get one of his tutorials and, and get paid for it type of thing. So you and I have always discussed the power of these social media buttons on our blog and website. So will you explain the two different ways to use those plugins, sure. those buttons? So what we did discuss was the, the difference between your own icons at the top and right. the bottom of your website, which are just literally links to you, Lori's Twitter, Instagram, and all the other networks using their icon. But inside the post, there are share buttons, and that's the difference. The share buttons are the person sharing your blog post from within your site to their 
people on their social at Twitter or what have you, uh, Pinterest. They can pin images and do all those other shares. And a dialogue basically pops up on your screen when you say Twitter. And if you're logged into Twitter, it'll show you the actual box you're posting to. And the rest is, right. uh, the rest is history. And that's so important. And I think that's one of the biggest things that's, that is overlooked by so many uh, people that aren't really bloggers, yet they have a blog. Like at this point in life, most of us creative entrepreneurs have a blog, but we use it maybe seldomly and up, upload our portfolios, that sort of thing. But it's always wonderful to have those social media plugins that you can share your content. And if you don't, other people that land on your website because it's frustrating when I get on a website and I want to share a cool article or a painting or something and I try to find the button to share it and I, ha I can't because they don't have a Twitter button or or a like or something like that and so I have to go grab the URL and manually do it so it's a nice shortcut for people so just don't overlook those social media plugins are they're very important yeah, and I want to just uh, mention that the people on the Q&A, there's so many relevant questions there. We're going, going to get to them. It's going to be impossible to answer everything. Oh. Made, made of tags and <laughs> a phone versus a camera and all this stuff. But when you join the 2020 Club at the end of this, if you haven't already, you're going to get those answers in the groups that we're creating. Yeah, that's what I'm excited about. With the 2020 Club, we want to invite you guys to join. It's a free club. And we're going to break off into groups and answer so many of these questions in detail. And we can all help each other because so many of you are experts at what you do. And then you have an opportunity to share what you're up to. And, and it'll just be a wonderful new little network for us all to get through these strange months that we're going through. So, but I would like to try and get through some of those questions. But first, I want to get to hashtags because yes, that sir. is... That is such a, a big conversation. It's still very relevant and they're still mysterious to people. And so, um, Reg, it's like another language and you speak hashtag better than anybody I know. So well, will you share a little bit, <laughs> will you um, share a little bit of, I know people are saying this is so overwhelming. It is, I knew you guys would feel like this. A lot is coming at you. That's why I said, take your notebooks. I'm throwing spaghetti and hoping something sticks. And then we're going to, as Stu just said, be able to go to the 2020 club where things are going to slow down and you're going to get the information in small increments. And there's going to be quick little videos. We're in beta is what I want to just remind everybody. We just have launched just today. And no, no, is that beta or beta? Beta, beta, beta. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> With one T. But uh, you're all beta testers is what it is. So it's very exciting. And we're going to have so much fun over there. And we're going to give you fresh content. And again, it's, it won't be nearly as overwhelming. So thank you for your patience um, with us today. And I know you've learned a lot. And I have too. And so, and it is a lot. But anyway, back to hashtags. Because like I said, you speak that language very well. And can you... Well, thanks, Lori. Can you give us some of the best hashtag practices? So I I'll give you, I'll give you a couple of them yes. and everybody. Thank you so much for hanging around because yes. uh, we did. We tend to ramble. There, if you're out there. No, seriously, we, we, tend, we tend to ramble a little bit. You should see us when we talk amongst ourselves. Oh, we'll go on for like, you know, we'll have like a half hour meeting. It'll go on for like three hours. So oh, really, it's horrible. We're, no, so, never. We're, we're, we're so happy that you're here. And so on um, hashtags, yeah, it's a whole different language, it seems like, right? So you can go to Twitter, and Lori and I have talked talked about this. Three hashtags are, are like key over there. Who, who would know? Okay, we found out using maybe three hashtags is probably the best way to do it. But I'm going to talk about Instagram because everyone asks. Yes, about everyone it. loves Instagram still, I think. Yeah, yeah, every, oh, every, everyone yes. asks. Well, so uh, when you use hashtags over on Instagram, you get, they say, 13% more viewers on your post than if you, if you did it. I think it's more. I, I, I post I do too. Hashtags and it just seems like they fall flat. Now, people ask, it's like, and this will go sort of against the, the, the common, common grain of knowledge out there. But I use a lot of hashtags. 
I use all of them. They say uh, you can use 30 hashtags on an Instagram post. I use all 30, but it's because I speak what Lori calls fluent hashtag. <laughs> so, but, 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 but the thing is, if, 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 you know, if you're still new, new to hashtags and you're still like, you know, it, it's, it's a little overwhelming, I'd try to keep it simple between maybe 10 and 14. Now, now, so you're you're like okay, great, Rich. Ten or fourteen hashtags. Well, what what, what am I what, what what will I do to find those hashtags? Well, uh, let's go over a, 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 like Taylor says, stuff not not to do. <laughs> and um, on hashtags, see, a lot of you I know out there are artists. Now, here's a hashtag that everyone uses: art. If you're an artist, now that's followed by two hundred and thirty million people. Two hundred thirty million people have used that art, art hashtag. I think it's 230, 130. I, I, I don't know the exact number, but it's millions a lot of and people. Millions. Yeah. millions and millions. So if you use that art hashtag for your post, chances are uh, no one's going to see it because it's going to just be uh, in, in a line of a gazillion other posts. And uh, the same goes for like photography and a, a few other popular hashtags. So you have to go what's called off axis a, a little bit. So if, if, if you're in New York City, then you can type in New York City art, but you know, that's still a little too generalized. So maybe stick with something that's even more focused. And so you want to drill down into something that, that's like a, a little tinier. And so you can capture the, the, the smaller and more relevant audience. So you have to use, yeah, go ahead. Mark. Oh, no. And like you said, it's a great way to engage on a topic too and find people, right? That's another way to find yeah, people. It's, it's a great way to find people. Yeah, and and, and I, I I mean I I'll, I'll, this is one of my secrets, so I guess I might just throw oh you're it out gonna there. give it away oh good I, I might I think I'm gonna uh oh um, well so he so, just uh, told me this recently by the way it, it, this is a big one oh so, my gosh um, I can't even believe this right now yeah I'm gonna throw it out there so <laughs> so uh, one of the best things you can do is if you're trying to figure out what you're going to ha what hashtags you're gonna use is you want to look at your competition. Find that great piece of art or great piece of photography or that amazing real estate listing. Uh, uh, it, it, it's applicable to everything. And so you go over to that post and see what hashtags they use. And, yeah, and then you grab their <laughs> hashtag. Now, now, this might not work because it's like if your favorite person is like, say, I don't know, Lady Gaga. She I don't even know. Um, okay. <laughs> but so, so, so like if, if you have a favorite artist and they have a gazillion followers, maybe not steal their hashtags because they're too big. But if they're like, uh, you know, uh, 50,000 followers, 10,000 followers, someone that, that's fairly similar to you, but just a little bit larger, take their hashtags and cut out the big ones. So if there's um, photography, if there's art, if there's sales, cut off those really popular hashtags and just go with the smaller ones. And so I, I talked to Lori about this, and I don't want to ramble your time. Thank you for waiting. But th th there's a, a practice called, and people do this all the time, they add in vanity hashtags. Yeah. And I, I call them irrelevant uh, vanity. Uh, and I, I give Lori a hard time, but hers are relevant. She is solvent-free with Lori McNeil. Now, if you <laughs> add that to the end of a post, no one is going to see that. No one. It makes you feel good. You've got that at the end, but no one's going to see that post. <laughs> you know, no one's searching for that. I'm doing it anyway. No, but but it's okay for you to use it because you're hashtagging for the future. You I know, am. you're launching your brand. You're you're launching your your, your whatever your solvent free. Well, I'm a Cobra uh, girl, and right, I use right, right, right. So, Cobra water mixable oils. So, right, so you're. And that's just my clever way. Okay, so so you're gonna. Hopefully that is going to grow with you. And so, you know, six months from now, that will be relevant. But everybody else out there, stop it. Don't do it. Stop with those weird hashtags on the end of your post. And here's another one. Uh, you see people with their name, okay? And like mine's Red Sadler, hashtag. That's great. But don't do Red Sadler and then Red Sadler photography and then Red Sadler X whatever. Don't add three or four of your own name or three or four of your own brand. You just need one to keep track of yourself. Just that. That's so, great. So those are pretty much my hashtags. Keep them easy and keep them between ten and you know ten and fourteen. If you get a good feel for them and you're you're able to steal the right ones and it's working for you, add those. Go out to thirty. But those are just some simple hashtags. I gave you my secret, which is basically take from your peers. 
take those asterisks and the popular ones and add those in. So that, that's it, guys. So those, that, those, are great. those are great hashtag tips. Yay. And I know you have more up your sleeve, but those will have to be on the club where you meet us for those. So do we have time to take just a couple questions? I know we're running late. But no, yes, no. I mean, I feel uh, yeah, 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 we can. Yeah, okay, we can definitely so I take got, some questions. I got bounced off. So I only have a few that came back up when I got back, logged up back on. But like, I'll, um, I'll, I'll take it from the top really quick. Okay, uh, I'll okay, just let's read see them if we can go through them pretty quickly. Well, someone asked me, how do you find influencers? Um, and we yes, can all answer that. That was Mark. I remember that. Mark's yeah, 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 Mark. Well, I mean, I mean, for me, it's like hashtags. There you go. Hashtags are a great way to find influencers. Uh, in, in, so in, how? In, in, but tell us how to find them. Like, do you type in hashtag in the search? The hashtag? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you'll it? actually, yeah, you'll actually go to the search box, box on Instagram, and depending okay. on what vertical that you're in. Okay. Uh, you know, it, let's it, say oil painting. We want to find oil painting. Right. No, no. Here's the key. Don't do it from the desktop for Instagram. Do it oh. from your phone. So type it in on your phone, okay. and then type type in like oil painting. Or if you want to type in plein air painting, that'll okay. surface all of, uh, a lot of Lori's stuff because that's a, one of the popular hashtags that she uses, and so it'll sur surface her content. So, but you'll you'll find all, all a lot of the top influencers using that hashtag. Instagram will surface the people it likes and the oh. people that are, are are relevant to you because it, its algorithm sort of looks out across all the people and says, "Hey, I think they might know these people, or these people might be relevant." So it'll grab them and pull them to you. So that's a great way to find influencers, you know, in, in your little, little corner of the world, whatever it may be. So that's super. Laura, okay. Yes. Yeah, so, so we. The first oh, hashtag bad. started in 2007 by Chris Messina on Twitter. He start. he was a Google, um, developer and he started using a hashtag back in 2007 as a way to start a topic and because in 2007 there's already a lot of conversation on twitter and that's how he was able to kind of find people that were like-minded so that's what the hashtag came from just had to throw that in there i think cool. it's interesting so uh, any more questions like yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we've got more i'm going to just run through them really quickly okay, and perfect. hopefully i don't miss any and then, uh, so and then we'll wind down after this but you want to be able to visit the 2020 club before you guys leave though. Okay. So don't, don't, these, leave. these people hanging on are tough. I'll tell you. you guys I are know. Tough. I know because we're, we're way okay, past. Sorry. I'm in the, I took us in the weeds. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm going out of the weeds. So okay, let, me just, let me just, let me pepper I'll a couple of answers in here. Listen, the, what should an image be at PPI and length and width online? Reg said square images work good for Instagram. But if you're going to Facebook and some of the other networks, a landscape image may be better and it won't be cropped by the network. So when you're talking length and width, 1600 wide by 900 tall is 16 by nine. But you can take that to 800 by 450 is still 16 by nine. It's the same aspect ratio. And your image, if it's taken with a really high density camera, you need to take it into Photoshop and um, size it down to get the megabyte value down and into the, you might have to crop the best part of your image out depending on the aspect ratio of your camera. And doing that, we're gonna cover way more in depth in the blogs on the 2020 Club. Okay, cool. All right. <clears throat> what else? Okay, so uh, let's see, did, did you get the alt tag one? Uh, as no, is that, okay. All and uh, tags, they, they're de fantastic questions. Alt tag is just to go out there with your blog post. Everything underneath it, the meta tags are something that we're gonna cover in depth. And it's for Facebook, Google, Instagram, everything is the same. It's search engine optimization. And we have experts on hand, myself, everybody involved is gonna answer all these questions in the club. Okay, um, I, I just have a quick one. Uh, sorry, I'm missing you people that, that have had questions way from the, uh, the beginning. But Yes, please. Uh, I, I have someone said, how do you stand out uh, from other artists with the same name? Uh, yeah, that's and, and, and show up on Instagram. That is a tough one because, like I said, uh, the algorithm does a huge amount of work on Instagram. You guys don't know this, but I, I manage a ton of branded accounts. And so I'll actually type in the word Tim because I want to find an artist by the name of Tim. It yeah. knows what Tim I'm looking for because it knows, 
you know, my little bubble of, That's of, creepy. Uh, of people. So, so Instagram knows a lot about you. So uh, all I can say is the best practices, and this works across every platform, share great content and, and also use some decent hashtags and great descriptions. And that's how you'll stand out. So, you know, that, that's, that's the best way to do it. Right. Okay. One more. How big do I have to get before I get somebody like Reg and Stu? My company takes care of mom and pops. I met Lori. She's a brand. I have a football uh, outlet down in Alabama. It's, it doesn't matter. If you're in the 2020 Club, our information is valuable. It's not expensive. It's free. And you know what? You go with my hosting company, Lloyd did. It's not that big a deal. You go to GoDaddy, you go here, you go there. It's all relative. It was a lot cheaper for me to go to you than them, by the way. Yeah. I didn't mean them. Oops, oops. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, get get the, the tips. That's what this whole thing is. is the traction from Lori is uh, something that I'm loving. I've been thinking about building a community because Community software is not that easy, and it hasn't been available until it caught up with my thought process, and now it exactly. is. Exactly. We forgot to say that, by the way, because no you, you had this idea a long time ago, and you had to wait for it to catch up to you. Sorry. So my little nephew jumped on and asked something somewhere. Where was that? It was it was about Twitch. Where'd that go? You keep go answer one more or something, and let me. Find yeah, it. no, no, we shouldn't. We have a lot of people that were like been waiting a while. So uh, yes. Uh, Someone asked after three years on Instagram, my uh, I might have answered it. I don't know. Okay. Oh. I answered I answered two in yeah, the text. Ahead. Okay, uh, perfect. Answers. Perfect. So I'm not sure. It was Doug. I see him. Uh anyway, okay. Well we'll answer off the air to him. But anyway, okay. Go ahead. Sorry, Reg. Yeah, someone asked after three years on Instagram, my fo uh, following consumer base is still rather low. How do I get a better uh, customer audience? Most of my current followers are other artists and fans. Well, this is uh, this is what how Lori and I built our followers all over the place. Look to your peers. Look at the people who are making comments and they're most active, and reach out to those people. Uh, you, you know, and 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 that's how you help grow your brand. Find active people on social media, and 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 and, and engage with them. And may I chime in? Uh, yeah. interesting content too you know that will help and I one thing I always taught about because I really built a big following on Twitter very quickly and I wrote an article years ago how to how to reach beyond your niche on Twitter and so one thing artists um, I'm gonna pick on us artists a little bit just for a moment but we have tunnel vision quite a bit and a lot of artists just want to follow other artists and they use Instagram as a place of inspiration and networking amongst themselves, which is great. And if that's how you want to use it, that is fine. But don't let yourself, you know, get, get upset that you're not growing that much if that's been your focus. And I'm not saying that is for you, whoever I just asked that. But anyway, reach out, use hashtags that can draw people in uh, other than just artists. Uh, you know, think about even designers and uh, interior decorators and, photographers and people just a and little bit on the edge of your neck. I'm going to jump in here real quick too. Share, yeah. a, a lot of people have a huge problem on Instagram and sometimes you have, you can't do what I'm about to recommend. Okay. But <laughs> share other people's content if you can. Yes. Uh, That's share kind stuff. of a new concept for me on well, Instagram. Yeah, no, yeah, for you, definitely. But yeah. yeah, share other people's content because people want you, uh, people love it when, you know, you, you love it when people share your content. I'm doing that and, in my stories more. Right. So, so people love it when, when, when uh, you know, I, I know I love it when people share my content. So when you share someone else's content, you know, they love that. It gets their attention. It, 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 it's just a nice way of sort of saying thank you or I appreciate your work. And it breaks up the monotony of your, your brand or your page sometimes. Because you have, you know, your art, your photograph, your, your, your content, post, 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 post. And it's all you have. People are like, okay, I like your stuff, but, you know, you need to mix it up a little bit. Right. Okay. Do we have some more? I see a couple other ones, but you're, I don't have the whole list anymore like you do. So uh, yeah, not, um, let's getting see. Close? I see one about YouTube. Yeah. Go ahead and just fire that one out. 
Oh, oh I so, see. Well, someone asked how we signed up for the 2020 club. We, we might want to stick that in real quick. Yes. Just so, you know, we're, we're losing some people. We've gone on a little bit. Yes. Could, could we could we do a quick blurb about the 2020 yes, club? Yes, absolutely. Maybe get that out there. Okay, so Stuart. People can wander off, and if you want to stick around after for some more Q and A, that sounds we'll, good. We'll I that. think that's smart because we're excited about this. And Stuart has worked very hard to build a beautiful site for us. And I, you weren't going to show it. You were going to make people join and then see it. But come on, will, will you please, please, just show us real quick, little show my profile. Absolutely. Okay. Good. Let me get on with it. I, I had to twist your arm screen. about it earlier. <clears throat> All right, I'm sharing my screen and you should see a video background on Lori's lessons. Everybody see that correctly? Do you see that, Lori? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, there's a screen down that? below though, blocking it. If you have any question. Let's see, maybe that's my screen. If you have any question about where you are, you're at finearttips.com. And when you go there, if you don't know what to click, click the orange button at the top and it says enter the 2020 club. This is not going to show the registration form because I'm already logged in. So I'm going to drag another version of this in Firefox over here real quick. As you scroll down, you see a welcome introduction from Lori and you see this is pre-filled with some dummy user data that I did a little while ago. And you actually just sign up to the club after hitting that orange button at the top. It's also in these drop-down menus, join the club, club login, activity. This is a social network. And it's free, you guys. It's free. It's this free. is just us all going to have a, a nice club where we can all visit about all these ideas we've been talking about today. Right. So we, we've streamlined this blog over the last two years into something that's more manageable for Lori because there was over 700 of her beautiful blog posts over the last 10 years. And there was a lot of miscalculations by people who worked on it before me, but we straightened all that out and we're happy to, to reintroduce it with her beautiful blog over the last 10 years. Now with all this new content from Reg for social media, myself for tech and Lori for all of her art tips and travel and everything that you can imagine. So. It, when you look at the, the blog, Fine Art Tips is broken down by Lori into all the places she's always blogged in, but her Lori's Lessons blog are where the new ones coming out for the 2020 Club are mostly going to reside. They can be anywhere else. Social media tips, we'll have uh, guests just like we've had Taylor and Steven today. Thank you so much, you guys, for being here. Reg has his mainstay social media tips blog which we are going to start populating. He is going to start populating. But Lori's social media tips are also in here too. And tech tips, Stu's tech tips blog. After you have joined, you're, you're going to be able uh, to see, hold on one second, I have to refresh my screen. The 2020 Club, your profile. And I'm going to go, once you're in the 2020 club, it'll feel more like a social network. Not a lot of stuff going on at the top, all the contents going on in the middle. And you'll be able to see since this morning I had to launch the site, people have been joining every little while since this morning and started to fill out their profiles. So if we go to, for instance, I have to try and find Lori now. And it's pretty easy to find people if you're going to start searching them. Oh, we have a name. lot of members all of a sudden. That's exciting. I know. If you search people by name, there's Reg right there. We'll just yeah. get to, to Lori's. Okay, here's Lori's. Nobody's going to see this profile stuff. I'm logged in as a top-level administrator, so don't worry about that. Lori McNay is going to be here. And she's already populated her profile with some interesting stuff including her little bio blurb at the top. And you'll see a menu that goes across here about the things you can do internally on the site. And Will you show the groups as well? Yes, and you can populate your own social media channels here. So when Lori has photos in her gallery, she's already made a, a gallery, so people can make their own galleries. This is free, images to upload, make your own gallery, show your wares. This is what Lori has coined the phrase where, where creative entrepreneurs meet. 
show your stuff so you can create your paintings gallery, all of her beautiful artwork. And you can comment on them just like regular social media and scroll through the beauty of all her pictures. Any and chat we have groups. And, and we the have groups is where I th I'm really excited about these groups. Yeah. So I hope people will utilize them. Yeah. Right, right. And, 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 and we're trying to create a, a brain trust. So right. it's like, you know, not just me and Lori and Stuart answering questions, but we're answering each other's questions, trying to help us through this, these trying times. So, I mean, uh, we're trying to create a, a new friendly community that uh, is supportive, is supportive. Yeah. Anytime something happens that's relevant in the club, we welcome people just automatically when they join. And then when somebody says something or does something in a group, it's in this feed. And you also have your own activity feed on your page that I didn't show you. But if we go to the groups, let's ju just go to Art with Lori real quick here before we try and wrap this up. And uh, some of the user interface I'm still working on here, but it, it works relatively well. Just the groups page has, has a sidebar that is not my particular love. So I had to put the, the menu for the groups at the top. No big deal. But you can see Lori McNee in her own group says, have you uh, got a question about this or that? I'm not gonna go drill down into her content, but you can share beautiful imagery and all that imagery is going to be available throughout the site. And she is posted in her own group. So what you do as an artist, if you, if you have a question with, with Lori, this will gain traction and grow its own legs by asking questions here. And just like on our webinar today, I saw people already throwing in answers to questions I didn't have time for right then. So this is what Reg just got finished saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can share your own content over there. And, and uh, you can interact with other users. And I mean, it, it's, it's a full blown social network. And we're really yeah, it's excited. another way to be discovered for yourselves as well. So, and brand yourself. So th just another avenue. And, and you a great know, way you know, the thing that Lori and I and Reg have wrapped our heads around is delivering content through video. And for me particularly, I'm good at screencasting. And just like talking to Stephen and uh, Taylor, the, thing, the things that are second nature to me may not be perfect for you, but you're gonna learn about what software to use. And I teach in a screencast, the back end of certain softwares, like Stephen was talking about, and demystify some of the things that everybody has the questions on. In about 20 minutes, you go, oh, it's that simple, really? Thank you. And most of the stuff I give away in software tips is open source, just like Stephen was talking about. It's free. Okay. Well, that's very right. exciting. Thank you, everybody. So what are we doing about the rest of the questions? Are we going to do them, take them over? Yeah, to yeah, them? yeah. I mean, it, it, okay, so we've unveiled the 2020 Club. Yes. Uh, we're, we're here to help. So, you know, as, as long as you guys can stay, everybody, um, we'll try and answer a few of these questions. Okay. We can just tackle them right now. And anybody that wants to leave, I'm just so grateful that you hung in there and are here. Thank you so much for joining us. And we hope to see you at the 2020 Club and, and on the other social media channels. Thank you. Oh, uh, here, I, I see a good one right, right now. Okay, it's like, great. Should, should we keep uh, any personal posts on, personal, on your personal page and art on a professional page? Uh, Lori, I, I'll let you maybe take that one. I mean, <laughs> good what, what do you think? Because I mean- Okay, so uh, is this person, what do you think they're describing? Like Facebook? personal versus uh, business or yeah I, I mean you know for an artist should you uh share your art on on your personal page wait it says uh or is it a blog keep, they're talking should about? we keep any personal posts on a personal page and art on a professional page i think uh, social media okay so social media let's just say they're talking about facebook possibly again you touched on this earlier that we want to you know be mindful of not sharing the exact same content on, at the right. same time across our social media channels if we can help it. But like, for instance, I have a Facebook business page as well as a professional page. And I just do my, or excuse me, personal page. And I do my best not to put the exact thing up there. Every now and then though I will, like I blasted, oh, come to the 2020 Club webinar. You know, I did do that on both platforms. But um, again, it's kind of putting on your, it's sort of the difference for me between like Instagram the, the wall where all our Instagram stays on our profile versus the stories. 
So I kind of use it that way where I want to keep a bit more professional and more mindful of very nice photos and uh, the, the brand image I want to portray that's going to be there, whereas these stories disappear quickly. And so a personal page, I keep a little more personalized and show a little bit more. I, I am careful about sharing too much family stuff, although there's my daughter-in-law right there and my grandson. I saw him, but I don't share a whole lot of that, just a little. And so... So that's how I do it. Everyone will find their own cadence that works for them. But again, it's good to mix up the content on your different channels. Right. And, and yeah, go ahead. No, I also think. Um, oh, yeah. Good, Taylor. Uh, if the question is, are, are you a part of your brand? If you are a part of your brand, like just speaking from like a YouTube perspective, like if, are, am I a vlogger? You are your brand. So the things you're doing in your everyday life could absolutely be applicable as a professional post as well. It could be the same thing. So true. And people like to see that personal side on there. And, and, and you know, so just not, not your branded content. It adds right. a little personality. Yeah, that's interesting to a lot of people. A lot of people yeah. like that. A lot of people like connecting to you on a personal basis. They, wanna, they want to be friendly with you, so... If you're friend, if you portray a friendliness towards them, it's a uh, more of more of a connection. Yeah, I agree. And comments or uh, answering comments are a great way to build um, that friendship across. Uh, and and it's hard to keep up with. And I'm really bad on my own blog. And I'm going to start doing better, Stuart. I need to do better. I will going forward. I just, like I said, I I got hacked a few years ago, and it was just so overwhelming and I just didn't get my mojo back. Yeah, somebody, so, your somebody, mojo. Somebody, yeah, somebody, mojo. Just, somebody just said, I just Googled and 2020 Club is not show, showing up. Well, we launched this morning, so let yes. Google, let Google uh, index us for a little few days. Okay. We'll be good. You're the pro. We'll see how you do on that, Stuart. Yeah. The, the heat is on. Well, so. it's more, the, the 2020 Club is too vague a search. It is. It is, but and I oh, think oh, hey, 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 it's okay. So, Stuart, we'll, 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 move, we'll move up. We'll move it up. <laughs> so, okay. Any other questions? So, let's see. I see Maria's about YouTube. She might not be here anymore, but I might have gotten that. Did you? Uh, okay, I answered it. Okay, good. All right. And I, I, like I said, I can't see them all because I got logged out and logged back in and lost everything. So, right. we're getting a lot of nice feedback from everybody thanking us and thank you. You are the ones that made this special for us. So we're, we're really thrilled. We weren't sure what we were going to end up with today. We, we were getting a lot of signups, and we know that the ratio of who really shows up is always different than the 500 people that sign up. So we're really grateful to have this group join us today. And, uh, oh, you're finding some of us, see, Stuart. Uh, all I did was put your name with the 2020 Club, and there's okay. no problem. And you can see how our branding is going across the Google image ecosystem, and yes. I have no problem with that. That's what I do. That's uh, great. So, so we'll be showing up. We'll be found. And people found us before we even launched, so we were pretty excited about that. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. So thank you. I'll look forward to seeing everybody online and within the 2020 club. Any parting words from my beautiful panel? Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Taylor. And thanks to my partners, Reg and Stu. I'm just so grateful for you all. And please um, you, invite, your us. invite your friends. Thanks for having us. Invite your friends and great. family and dogs and cats. All right. Thank, all right. thank you. <laughs> okay. Thanks, everybody. All right. Y'all take care. Thanks. We're going to do this together. Hang in there. Okay, bye. bye.